Section 14.6 right here has a lot of important stuff in it. It's got tangent planes. We're also going to do normal lines. We're also going to do linearization and then also differentials. I couldn't fit that all up there, so I just said it in words. So before we get to the Math 3C stuff, let's look at some Math 3A. So if you have a function that looks, let's say, like this, and then you're given a point and asked for the equation of the tangent line, you would then use the derivative to find the slope of that line. Then you could go y minus y naught equals the slope times x minus x naught. And that'll give you the equation, assuming this is the point x0, y0. Now we don't usually do this in math 3a, but what I'm going to do is set it equal to 0. So I'm going to take this and move it to the other side. The reason for this is that's the way the formula is set up in math 3c. So in math 3c, the equation is going to be set equal to 0. Now, in math 3c, you could be given an explicit function, like z equals the square root of x times y. Or you could be given an implicit function, like e to the zx plus the square root of x minus y equals 9. Well, because our formula right here is going to be set equal to 0, then that's what you should do for these, set them equal to 0. So I could just subtract z from both sides. Or with this one, I could subtract the 9. So in other words, set it equal to 0 before you start taking derivatives. Okay, then... For the tangent plane so it's going to be similar to this but of course we have more variables so the formula for the tangent plane is going to be zero equals take the derivative with respect to x and then plug in x naught y naught z naught to get a number and then multiply by x minus x0. And then it's going to be the derivative with respect to y, and then y minus y0. And likewise, the derivative with respect to z, and then z minus z0. That will be the equation for the tangent plane. So a tangent plane would be like if you have this shape right here, a sphere and you're given this point, which would be x0, y0, c0. And then take a plane, like a piece of paper, and it would just be touching at that one point, which I don't know that I can draw very well on a piece of paper, but hopefully here, it would be like a piece of paper that's just touching that point. Now. With a sphere, it would only touch the point, but depending on the shape of the graph, like if the graph is curly, then when you draw a tangent line right there, it's just touching at that one point, but it would actually hit the function again. So that can happen. But if you zoom in really close, then the tangent line and the function itself are very close to each other. Okay. Now, for the normal line. So the normal line then means, normal means perpendicular. So it would be the line that is perpendicular to this red piece of paper that I just put down right there. So that's the normal line. It's going to be perpendicular. And the equation for that or I should say equations, because it's a line. We'll do it in parametric form. And the good news is you basically have everything you need right here. 
you would take the derivative with respect to x, whatever that number is, multiply by t, and then plus x naught. The derivative with respect to y times t, and then y naught. The derivative with respect to z times t, and then z naught. So for the first example, these are the two equations, sets of equations that we need. Now, for example number one. So the function is going to be e to the xy plus 6x squared z equals 13, and it's going to be at the point 1 comma 0 comma 2. So the first thing to do is set it equal to 0. There we go, subtract 13 from both sides. Now take the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of the e function is the e function. And then do the chain rule. Take the derivative of this exponent up here. The derivative of x is one, and y is a constant, so it's gonna be one times y. Then move over here, the derivative is going to be 12x, and the z will just sit there as a constant. And the derivative of negative 13 is zero. Now plug in the numbers, one, zero, two. So it's gonna be e to the one times zero, and then times zero, plus 12 times one times two. So that will be 0, and that will be 24. Now take the derivative with respect to y. So it's going to be very similar to this. It's going to be e to the xy, and then the derivative of y is 1, so it's going to be times 1x. And this has no y in it. In fact, none of this does, so the derivative of all of this is 0. So then plug in the numbers and it's going to be e to the one times zero times one, which means e to the zero is one, so we just get a one. Then the derivative with respect to z. So this has no z in it, its derivative is zero. The derivative right here would be one, so it's gonna leave one times six x squared. And then plug in that x is one. Okay, so this actually gives us the vector that is perpendicular to the plane that we're looking for. Now for the equation of the plane. So it's gonna go 24 goes in front of x minus one, plus one goes in front of y minus zero, and six goes in front of z minus two and it's set equal to zero. Of course, it doesn't matter if you put the equal zero there or the equal zero there. I'm just used to putting it over there. Then let's go ahead and distribute. So this is going to be 24x minus 24 plus a y plus 6z minus 12 equals zero. And then that is going to be, well, I'll just put the x's, and then the y's, and then the z's. And this, together with that, is going to make negative 36. So you could even move that to the other side. Or you could leave it as negative 36 on this side. Okay, so this is the tangent plane. Now, what about the normal line? So since it's the equation of a line, you can put it in parametric form, x equals y equals z equals, and then you just take these numbers from the vector and that's what goes in front of t. And then just take the given point and add those numbers on. So 
plus a one plus a zero for that one and plus a two. All right, now let's go take a look at the graph and see if we got these right. Okay, so this is the function up here. For this one, for some reason, I had to solve for z for GeoGebra to like it. But anyway, this is the function. Nice, beautiful, purple looking function. And then the point is 1, 0, 2. So that's little a right here. And then we use the derivatives to find this vector. And that vector, you then put the numbers in front of x, y, and z, and it's going to give you the tangent plane. So notice that the vector and the plane are perpendicular. If you look this direction, you can see that those two are perpendicular. And also right here, you can see that at point A, the, let me zoom in a little bit. There's almost no difference at that point. There's almost no difference between the tangent plane. So if you look sideways, you can see there's pretty much no difference between the tangent plane and the function. So that is a good old tangent plane. And then for, zoom out a little bit, and then for the normal line, so it should be parallel to this black line and it should go through this point right here. Let's see, yay, it did it. So the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent plane and it goes through the point. Hey, for this video, make sure you watch till the very end because the last example is pretty challenging. It's from the homework, so make sure you watch that one. Okay, let's get back to it. And for example number two, so z is equal to x squared plus y squared. The point is going to be at 1, 1, 2. First thing to do is set it equal to zero. And now take the derivative with respect to x. So that is easy, that's just 2x. And then substitute a 1, so it's going to be 2 times 1. Likewise with the derivative with respect to y, that's going to be 2y. Plug in this 1, and that's 2. And the derivative with respect to z, for that right there, it's going to be a negative 1. So that means that the vector that is going to be perpendicular to the tangent plane is this vector right there. Now find the equation of the plane. So it'll be take the vector 2 times x minus 1 plus 2 times y minus 1 and then minus 1 times z minus 2 equals 0. And then distribute, so it's going to be 2x minus 2, 2y minus 2, and negative z plus 2 equals 0. So I can then have these 2's cancel, or the 2 and the negative 2. And I would like to solve for z. So I'm going to move z to the other side so it becomes positive. So z equals 2x plus 2y minus 2. There's the equation of the tangent plane. Okay, before we do the normal line, I now want to do linearization. So use linearization to estimate z at the point 1, point 1, comma, 0 0.9. So this is just fancy words, which means this tangent plane is going to be very close to the original function as long as you stay close to this point. So 
I'm using a 1.1 and a 0.9, which is very close to the original 1 and 1. And so this will give us a good approximation of what z should equal. So don't be scared off by these fancy words. All it means is plug this in. Okay, so z is going to equal, according to the tangent plane, 2 times a 1.1 plus 2 times a 0.9 minus 2. Two times a 1.1 plus two times a 0.9 minus two happens to equal two. Now let's see what the actual answer is. So the actual answer would be go to the original function and now plug in the 1.1 and the 0.9. So it's going to be 1.1 squared plus a 0.9 squared. One point one squared plus a 0.9 squared. And our estimate was pretty good. It was off by 0.02. Now right now you might be thinking, why in the world would you do that? You've got a calculator. You can see what the actual answer is. Well, this is the very, very beginning of a very important idea that shows up through computer science, engineering, and that is, what if you have a complicated function? This one, of course, is not that complicated, but what if you have a complicated function and you don't need to know the exact answer, but you need to know it fast. We just need a fast approximation. Well, linear equations, this is just multiplying by two, and multiplying by 2 and subtracting 2. So this can be done very easily, very quickly. I could even do it without a calculator if forced to. It's not that difficult. So this can be computed very fast and it's pretty accurate. Okay, then the last part is the normal line. So parametric form is going to be x equals y equals z equals and then you just take the numbers from this vector and you put that in front of t so 2 times t 2 times t and negative 1 times t and then you put the numbers from the point 1 1 2 so plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 now let's take a look at the graph and see if it looks correct and here's example number two. We've got this paraboloid. The point one comma one comma two. So that's the point A right there. And then the equation of the tangent plane is this one right here. And if you look at it sideways, you'll see that the plane comes down like this, just barely grazes, hits it at A. And if you zoom in, or if I zoom in actually, then you can see that the plane, so if you look at this part, there's a little gap right there, tiny, tiny, no gap, no gap, no gap, tiny gap. So right around here, the plane and the function are basically the same, right around there. And then what about the normal line? So testing to see if I got that one right. So sure enough, it's perpendicular to the plane. It goes to the point A, so that one was correct. For example number three, we've got z equals this square root. The first thing to do is set it equal to zero. So I'll subtract z from both sides. So it's equal to the square root minus z. Now take the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of this square root function the derivative of a square root function is one over two times that square root function. And then do the chain rule, take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of this will be zero. The derivative of this is going to be one. Now plug in the numbers three and zero. 
So this is going to be 1 over 2 times 3 plus e to the 0. So substituting a 0 for y right there. So this is going to be 1 plus 3, that's 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So that means on the bottom we've got 2 times 2. Now I'll take the derivative with respect to y. It's also going to be 1 over 2 times the square root. And now take the derivative of the inside. Right here, that will be 0. Right here, the derivative is e to the 4y. And then do the chain rule for this exponent, and the derivative of that's going to be a 4. And then plug in the numbers. So this is going to be 4 e to the 0 over 2, the square root of 3 plus e to the 0. So the denominator is the same as last time. So the denominator is a 4. The numerator is also a 4. That means we get 1. And then for the easiest one, the derivative with respect to z, this has no z in it, so the derivative is 0. The derivative right here would be negative 1. So the vector that we get that is perpendicular to the axis we're looking for is this vector right there. Now for the tangent plane. That'll be 1 fourth x minus 3 plus 1 times y minus 0 and then negative 1 in front of z minus 2 and it equals 0. So that is going to be 1 quarter x minus 3 quarters plus a y minus a z and then negative negative will be plus a 2. And then I like to solve for z so I'm going to move the z to the other side. z equals and we would have 1 quarter x plus y and then we'd have 2 minus 3 quarters so that is 1 and a quarter or 1 and a quarter is 5 quarters okay now we're going to do the linear approximation So usually in the homework they try to be fancy and they say use the linearization to evaluate the z. So the real, really what we're doing is approximate z at 3.1 comma 0.1. So this point right here has to be close to the given point because our tangent line is only our tangent plane is only going to work if you stay close to that point and of course the z value isn't given because that's what we're looking for so just substitute those decimals in there so it'll be one quarter times 3.1 plus the y value plus five fourths and that is what z will equal so let's see calculator time. One quarter of 3.1 plus a point 0.1 plus five quarters. So it says that z should be approximately 2.125. Oops. Actual answer equals so that is the square root so going back to the given function substitute a 3.1 for x and substitute a 0.1 for y so how good is our approximation the square root of 3.1 plus e to the 4 times 0.1 and the actual answer is 2.143.
So at least for the first decimal, our approximation is good. It's off by a little bit in the second and third decimal, but that's pretty good, especially considering all we used was multiplication and addition. We didn't use anything fancy like E or square root. All right, the last part is the normal line. So that will be the parametric form of the line and take the numbers from the vector and put that in front of T. And then the original point was three, zero, two. So there's the normal line. Now let's go take a look at the picture, AKA the graph. All right, so for example, number three, here's the function, z is equal to the square root. Looks pretty cool, looks like part of an aircraft wing or something like that, or maybe somebody's designing a skate park. Okay, anyway, then, wait a second, don't do that please, just stay there. Then here's the point, three, zero, two. And now I wanna test the tangent plane and make sure that it actually looks like a tangent plane. Is it going through the point A? Let me see, I'll turn off the function. Yes, the plane is definitely going through the point A, that's good. And if you zoom in, does it look like a tangent line? Or excuse me, tangent plane. Yeah, that looks very close when you're close to the point A. And now for the line, it goes through the point A and it should be perpendicular. Again, let me turn off this and see, does that look perpendicular? All right, I think that we got this one right. Okay, now for the last example of this section. As you can see, this is like number four and number five on the homework. So find the equation of the tangent line. So far, not too bad, okay. But the intersection of two surfaces. So this one is a sphere and this is a plane. So basically you've got a nice sphere and then there's gonna be a plane that slices it at some angle. Well, imagine if this was an orange and you slice it, then where, where they intersect, that would be around the outside edge of the orange. So if you slice an orange and then you take this part, take this part and look at it like that, then you're looking at a smaller circle shape. And then we need a tangent line at some particular point. Well, when, let me just use planes as an example. So let's say you've got this plane and it's got a vector that's perpendicular to it. We can do the uh, derivative with respect to X, derivative with respect to Y and derivative with respect to Z to find that vector. And then you have another plane and where they intersect, there's this line. Well, this one has a vector that's perpendicular to it that's going at this angle. In order to find the equation of a line, this red pen right here, this vector right here is going to be perpendicular to this one, and it's also gonna be perpendicular to this one. So we need a vector that's perpendicular to two other vectors. That means we get to do the cross product. So to begin, take this function, you could set it equal to zero, <clears throat> that would just move a negative 16 to this side. When you take the derivative of that, it's zero. So you don't really need to do it. So for this one, its vector would be, take the derivative with respect to x, take the derivative with respect to y, take the derivative with respect to z. And then plug in the numbers. So this is going to be two times one plus square root of seven two times one minus the square root of seven, and two times zero. Now for this one. So take the derivative with respect to x, take the derivative with respect to y, 
take the derivative with respect to z. So there are the two vectors. Now find the cross product. So it's going to be 2 times 1 plus the square root of 7, 2 times 1 minus the square root of 7, and 0. And then the other one is just 1, 1, 1. And then find the cross product. So when you cross out the i, that would leave this times 1 minus 0. So the first entry is going to be 2 times 1 minus the square root of 7. When you cross out the j, it would be this, which is the 2 times 1 plus square root of 7 times 1, and then minus 0. So then that would be with the middle component, you have to put a negative in front. So that would be negative 2 times 1 plus the square root of 7. And then when you cross out this one, it's going to be 2 times this 1 plus square root of 7 times 1, and then minus this. So it's really going to say 2 and then minus 2. So those will cancel. If you distribute, this is going to be 2 square root of 7 and then minus a negative 2 square root of 7. So the negatives will cancel out, which means you have 2 square root of 7 plus a 2 square root of 7. So that's 4 square root of 7. Okay, now we have the vector that we need, and we have the point. So the equation of the tangent line I need a new piece of paper for this. x equals, y equals, and z equals. So you put the numbers for the vector in front of t. And then you put plus the numbers from the point. And from the point it was 1 plus the square root of 7 for the first one, and then 1 minus the square root of 7, and then 0. So that is going to be the tangent line. All right, so to begin with, here's the sphere. It's got a radius of 4. And then we've got this plane that intersects it. And so you can see right here, that's where they intersect. So that makes a circle like if you take an orange and cut off a round slice. Okay, then for the point. So here's the point A and that, yep, definitely looks like where they intersect. And then here's the equation of the line, the tangent line. Yes. Whew. I was a little bit worried about that one. That one was hard to type into the uh, all those square roots. So that definitely looks like a tangent line. So I got it. Yes. That's right. There's even more fun to be had in section 14.6, differentials. So first of all, real quick, for math 3a, suppose you have y equals x squared. Then you could say dy dx is equal to 2x, or you could multiply both sides by dx, and dy is equal to 2x dx. And then you would be given some numbers like estimate the change in y if x equals 5 and x changes by a point 1. So what that's really saying is just plug in a 5 and a point 1. So the difference in y is 
2 times 5 times 0.1. So that would be a 10 times 0.1. That means a 1. Now what that's really saying is if you plug in a 5 to the original function, you get that. Now what if x changes by a 0.1? That means it's going to be a 5.1. So it's going to be 5.1 gets squared equals 26.01. So how much did the y value change? The change in y would be 26.01 minus 25 is 1.01. .01. So the actual change in y is 1.01. .01. This dy is an estimate for that. So again, we're doing an estimate with an easier formula than having to do this with the squares and using a calculator. This part, I did it even without a calculator and it was easy, but it gives you a nice estimate for how much the y changes. That's math 3a. Now let's do math 3c. So you would have some function, z equals a function of xy, and then it would be very similar. dz is equal to, you take the partial derivative with respect to x and then multiply by the dx. Plus, you take the partial derivative with respect to y and then multiply by dy. So let's, for example, use z equals x cubed plus y squared at the point one comma one comma two, and then suppose that dx is equal to point one, and dy is equal to negative point one. So in the homework, they might say something like, find the maximum possible error of z if the possible error of x is a point one, and the possible error of y, y is a negative point one. All that error means, what if there's a little bit of a difference? So what if there's a difference in the x by a 0.1, difference in the y of a negative 0.1? So then dz will be, take the derivative with respect to x, that's 3x squared, and then times dx. Take the derivative with respect to y, that's going to be 2y, and then dy. And then substitute the numbers. So the difference in z will be three times, substitute one for x, and then dx could be off by 0.1, and then substitute a one for y, and then dy could be off by negative 0.1. So how much is that? Actually, I don't think I need a calculator for that because this is just a 0.1 times 3, so that's a 0.3. This would be a negative 0.1 times 2, so that's negative 0.2. And near as I can remember, a 3 minus 2 is a 1, so it should be off by 0.1. So let's see, the original z value is 2. If you plug in a 1 and a 1, it gives you 2. This is saying, what if you plug in a 1.1, and this is saying, what if you plug in a 0.9? So then z would equal a 1.1 cubed plus a 0.9 squared. And that would be the new z value. So 1.1 is cubed plus 0.9 is squared. So it's 2.141. Keep in mind the original z value was 2. So if you find the difference in the z values, the 2s will cancel and it will give you a 0 0.141. So this was my estimate for how much it would be off, which again, I was able to do without a calculator. This one, I did use calculator, but this is the actual value. So the estimate, it's pretty good, not bad.